Okay. Thank you for being the tech wizard today. <laughs> um, okay, Great. number two, we're resuming uh, our open session. And the public here, we have no public hearing. Uh, Recording in progress. Uh, I thought we were, I will report that we're no, um, we did, did discuss every item on the agenda of the closed session, but we did not do any, make any actions, any, especially no action. okay. Uh, public hearing, none. Uh, item three, our board members, an opportunity to remove items from the agenda, the consent agenda. Me. Nothing from me. Nothing from me. Uh, Tom? Nope. Nope. Okay. Well. I will comment on one item. Okay. And do we have first, public comment? Public comment we'll first. Public, yeah. First we'll have public comment. Any items? If you can. Thank you, um, Becky Steinberger. I have questions on two of the consent agenda items. Item 4.3, that is uh, information within the general manager's report, that there were two change orders, um, number five and number six, with McGuire and Hester. So, um, these are regarding change orders in the injection wells, and those changes were implemented on September 12th. I'd, I'd like to know what those changes were. Change orders are very expensive, so I think it's uh, good transparency to uh, let the public know what those change orders involve. That's item 4.3. Item 4.4 um, is very curious that there is a, a claim for $38,172 for hotel costs for Majora Brothers. They're a local, they're a local drilling company. I don't understand why the district would be billed such a high amount or an amount at all for hotel costs and uh, also tree removal. Um, I, I really question the wisdom of drilling a new well in the same area where there is contamination problems already. And um, so I'm assuming that the new well will be clear of those contamination problems, but I really question the wisdom of doing this. I'm glad that that well is going to be um, having some sort of remediation because it has been a, a problem well with contamination for a very long time. Thank you. Thank you. And then the uh, thank you for putting the net evapotranspiration and uh, total production graph into into the um, con consent agenda. Um, and I guess on page, so it's item 4.3, there's a graph on page 9 of 35 that it looked like in July that the production the uh, the production was going up, and then in August it went down, so it didn't continue on. And if you go to page um, eleven of thirty five, it kind of shows why that happened with the evapotranspiration going down, also, or it's a likely cause. The purple mm -hmm. dotted graph um, went down in in August, and likewise, the production went down. So, not necessarily a one for one relation, but it. I think that the weather is is one of the reason. One of the big. Well, it's obviously a big driver. Um, and it helps me in, in framing my thinking about 
our water use, especially with with the um, the rates, new rate structure coming up in the near future. So thank you for including it. Yeah, uh, our analyst, uh, Alyssa Abbey, did that. We were thinking we'd bring it back quarterly, or unless you want more. That's fine, yeah. Just it shows the trends. And she updated a little bit. I think she made it even nicer. We'll, we'll let her know. Yeah, it's great. It's just, it is, it is kind of interesting, but there's also, you know, another factor that I didn't really take, I didn't really understand until the COVID hit in that how many empty vacant houses were occupied during the pandemic on a full-time basis when they weren't, uh, who weren't before. And then, you know, I think sometimes the water consumption during the summer, especially is affected by what's going on with tourism, tourism business. And the weather could affect that also. Anyway, yeah, thank you for the, adding the transpiration. A little harder to hear, Carla. Data. I don't know why. What'd you say? It's just a little harder to hear you. I don't know whether you. Oh, you can't. I can't. Oh, Sorry. you know what? I heard it. Heard most of pull, it. Pull the mic a little closer. I, I noticed. Yeah. It. Thanks. Yeah, I was worried that that was an echo. Actually, I was hearing it loudly. Thank you. <laughs> it wasn't an echo. It was just my actual voice. So, anyway, okay. Thank you. Uh, are there any other comments? Do we have a move a motion? I'll move approval the consent agenda. Would you like to second or? Okay. All right. Okay. All in favor? Oh, we have to do it by. Voice Sorry vote. about that. Okay. Director Balboni. Yes. Vice President Jaffe. Yes. Director Lehu. Yes. Director Lather. And President Christensen. Yes. Okay, item five is, uh, the next item is oral communications. Um, and this is an opportunity for public members of, uh, uh, public members to speak on any item that is not on the agenda. Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. Um, I, just want to again ask that the district put documents available regarding the Pure Water SoCal project and both of the addendums, the 2020 and the 2021 addendums, available in the public libraries. They're not there. And as I said, I am planning to, uh, on my own expense, um, print them and get them bound so they are available if the district continues to refuse. So this is one last request. I've requested it through the library. The library has requested it. And each time the district refuses, saying it's available on the website, well, it's hard to find. And a lot of people do not use the computer. They would like to know about this project and do use the public libraries as their informational source. Um, there is um, a public comment open now on the City of Santa Cruz's um, pollution control permit um, that involves the wastewater outfall into the National Marine Sanctuary in the Pacific Ocean. This involves the district because once the advanced water treatment facility for the Pure Water SoCal project is up and running, that brine will be going directly out into the bay. There's been no study about that, and that's part of what my lawsuit is about. Um, there's been no study about the, uh, the effects of fluctuations in brine concentration uh, at the outfall or in temperatures, which is um, also of a consideration in the marine environments. So the um, Central Coast Regional Water Quality Control Board will be looking at this permit application renewal for the city of Santa Cruz in early December. The public um, has the ability until October 12th to comment on that analysis and anything to do with that permitting. And I encourage everyone to look at that document. There still is a problem um, with a, 
a rupture or a slight leak, some people say, in the effluent outfall pipe that is quite near to the shore. And uh, the Water Quality Control Board has asked the city of Santa Cruz to monitor it. They have been, but it still exists, and it shows up every year in the dyed plumes. So um, it would behoove the, the city and the State Water Quality Control Board to require that be repaired, especially with the incoming brine coming from the water treatment plant, the Pure Water SoCal. Thank you. Anyone else? Any? Um, I just wanted to mention that there are some new um, desal technologies that we should be aware of. And um, today, the Las Virginias Municipal Water District um, has announced that they've got a new pilot project. You probably read about it um, in the LA Times this morning. And it's um, a new way of um, implanting these desal pods. They're placed on the ocean floor about um, a mile or, or more out into the ocean off the coastline, and they use 40% less energy, and um, they use water pressure to power reverse osmosis, and they produce zero brine. And there are other companies that are working on these new, smaller technologies for desal, too, that are being implemented regularly. So I just thought that sounded exciting, and we to be true. want to follow these, yeah. So thank you. Nothing for me. Okay. I'm good. Tom, you said? I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, okay. Reports. For, it's the district council report is the main report. Yeah, thanks, President Christensen. Um, just a couple of things this evening. The first is a reminder that the legislative process was completed um, last Thursday. Um, so all the bills for this cycle are currently in front of the governor and he has until October 14th to sign or veto them. Um, lots of, lots of, uh, you know, interesting, you know, issues that went forward this year. We're in the process of reviewing everything to identify those that are relevant to the district. Um, and we'll be bringing reports, um, back to the, to the board, um, as we kind of identify bills that are, um, you know, important for us to, to be discussing. Um, in addition, um, one thing that was approved by the legislature was to place an initiative on the March 2024 ballot. Um, this is ACA 13. And what it would do um, would be to change the voter threshold that would apply to a constitutional amendment that would change um, or that would change the, the applicable voter threshold for a local agency to adopt a, a tax. Um, so you, you, as you'll, you know, um, probably remember, um, you know, doesn't not necessarily is relevant for us, but for cities, as an example, if they uh, propose a tax that would provide general fund dollars that requires a 50% vote, um, if they're going to propose a special tax, which would be for an identified purpose that, that requires a two thirds vote. Um, if there was a future initiative that would impose something more than a majority vote, two thirds or any other voter threshold, um, that initiative would be subject to the same voting threshold. Um, so as an example, if an initiative were to propose a, a new two thirds voting threshold for voters on a tax, it itself would have to pass by two thirds of the voters statewide for it to take effect. That's interesting. Um, the, the, this is, uh, you know, was an important priority of CSDA and some of the other other local organizations, um, in part for basic fairness, you know, with the idea being that what's good for 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 um, the underlying initiative, you know, should represent the same level of, of voter support. Um, but also, you know, most um, pressingly, uh, the board may remember there's an initiative on the November 2024 ballot um, to substantially restrict uh, local agencies' ability to um, impose uh, future fees and taxes. And for our purposes, it would um, change the current reasonable cost standard for water rates to lowest cost. Um, you know, if ACA 13 is approved by the voters in March, it will apply to um, that proposed initiative in November 2024 and raise the required voting threshold from 50 plus one to two thirds. 
Um, a lot more information to come, um, but just wanted to make sure you were aware you may see some press. Um, it, you know, towards the end of the legislative cycle, there was um, some discussion, um, both from uh, local government, but also from some of the uh, Howard Jarvis type folks. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Really interesting. Yeah, we are. Well, we're aware of it. We've been, I've been barraged on every email account I have about that right now. the last couple, last week or so. Any? Okay, thank you. Uh, on to item seven, administrative business. Yeah, Emma and I are going to tag team this one because she wrote the memo. I'll just say overarching, we wanted to just bring it to your attention, give you some options if you want to consider those tonight. But Emma, you want to dive into a little more details? Yeah, sure. So typically, as you know, we usually review these appointments in December, but with uh, Bruce Daniels leaving and Director Balboni on the board, we currently have an opening on the Public Outreach Committee and the Finance and Administrative Services Committee. So we, Ron and I talked with Jennifer, uh, Director Balboni, and she is not able to just fill into Dr. Daniels' seats. So that's why option one is proposed, is for all of the directors to look at the appointments and um, make them tonight. And by doing so, we don't have to review this item again in December like we usually do. And so when we were thinking about that, we decided it would make sense to also present all the external committees as well. So if the board wants to take action on that tonight too, they can, and then we wouldn't have to review it again in December. But if you just want to look at the internal committees tonight and do the external ones in December, that also works. So if, Ron, is there anything that you want to add? Yeah, I would just say there's a third option, you know, because if you're not prepared, it's a it's kind of a big decision. You have to think about your schedule. Usually the, the meetings are set, but sometimes they get changed. But the, I guess another option is if you want to just, us just to bring it back at, a, at the next meeting or a subsequent meeting, we can do that too if you're not prepared tonight. That's always an option. Um, are there any comments? Public comments. Well, we'll get to public comment, but do you have any specific questions? Okay, public comment. Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. You know, I I have often wondered the, what the purpose of the standing committees is. I've attended many of them. And usually there is more staff there than members of the public. And so I wonder how robust is the uh, um, search for people and, and inclusiveness of people to be on these standing committees. But other than, you know, saying that you have them, what uh, I've never heard a standing committee recommendation come to your board. Um, what is the purpose of the standing committees? Other people have asked me that too, and I... I couldn't answer. So if you can just review the purpose, the fundamental purpose of standing committees, I think that would be very helpful for the public. Thank you. Well, I, I went back and checked uh, the dates, uh, you know, the number of times these committees are meeting that uh, Dr. Daniels was on the public outreach. And it has two more meetings before the end of the year. And the Finance and Administration Services meets one more time. And both of those have alternates. Um, so I was seeing we, they're not sure we really need an action on these things right now. It's a good prompt the, for they have the item for everybody to start thinking about what, what they'd like to do and how they'd like to participate. And regarding the committees, my understanding of those are there, it's an exchange of information um, a sounding board. Uh, we there's usually a couple of people who attend from the public who are interested and they want to learn more about what's going on with the district and they have, you know, they're actually chosen for their interest in a particular committee. Not they aren't randomly assigned to any committees. So uh, it's more informal. That's why there aren't any reported you know, reports because no votes are taken. It's an, 
you know, it's much more informal, and that's the purpose of them is to provide a place where people can discuss and exchange information with the public, and the public can make anybody who's really interested may give their opinions on or ask questions like you were asking. And I, I'd like to add something is just, you know, my experience has been that some of the public members have really brought up some good ideas or mm -hmm. pointed out information that was really helpful. Yes. So I, I would say that's a benefit in my eyes. Yeah. They're not intended to be a board meeting. It's much more informal and it's to facilitate an exchange of ideas. So. I was also going to just add, you know, whether we do it now or in December, I mean, if um, it would work, if the scheduling is staying the way it is, I mean, I used to be on the public outreach committee. I could do that and then allow space to be open on the water resources committee. If I know director Balboni has attended those as a private citizen, but if that was something she was interested in and could work that out, that'd be, I'd be okay with that switcheroo. That's, I definitely be for all that. And I also wanted to ask about the Association of California Water Agencies Groundwater Committee because um, uh, director, former director Daniels um, is not here and I'd be happy to sub for him on that. It's, yeah, it's, and I, I may address that. Um, and Josh, you may help, or, or Taj even. I believe that committee, you, you apply for it. Uh, we Anybody can go, though. And the way it usually sits is the people that are on the committee sit at a table, and then whoever wants to attend sits, sits at the outer circle. We do sponsor, uh, uh, or, or I think Scotts Valley does this year, uh, consultant Montgomery and Associates and so they try to capture the essence of those meetings and share them with us verbally or, or in some fashion um, but if you're interested I think there's a nomination period can anybody remember it's been so long there's a nomination period so the next time that comes up we can bring it up uh, I think the board I forget the process but we can we can get you going in that uh, direction and I, yeah and I think I'm, I'm gonna guess that Director Daniels was, you know, you know, he'd done his PhD related to all of that. So I'm sure that he felt like he could provide some input there. So. Yeah, but there'll be an opportunity if you want to go down. It, it starts the day before the actual, uh, usually on a Monday. And you could you could actually sit in on and see, see, you know, gauge your interest at that point. It's very detailed, I'll tell you that. I've sat in on a few. He did, he did bring information on groundwater issues to the board after those meetings. Yeah. But I attended a couple of them, too, and it was very crowded. <laughs> and so sometimes you can't even hear what you're talking about. Um, but once you got on, the, got on the committee, that would be much more of an opportunity for him. I'll investigate and get back to you on a one-on-one, -on -one and we'll let you know when that process is available and engage in it. Well, any other, so does, do you have any opinions on this? Any preferences? You're one of the alternates. I think. I lost. Anybody seen? Turned on, that's why. Did you lose me? No, I, I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Sorry, I wasn't turned on. Um, yeah, I'm fine. I, I was just looking at the next Finance and Admin Services Committee meeting, and I'm good for that one, so I think that's good. I might also be interested in the Aqua Groundwater Committee. Since I'm retiring from my day job, I have more time. But um, What was that? I'm retiring from my day job. Oh. oh. So I'm going to have more time to um, volunteer for SoCal Creek on committees. So okay. we may have to arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I also will go to the meeting first and see if it's too dry for me. I might. <laughs> so. Yeah. 
the I think I heard Ron say that since it's close to December and there's not many meetings, that the alternates could just fill in. And I not sure I will be able to. I still do have a day job. <laughs> so um, if we want to have two people at the public outreach committee, maybe we should fill that seat or have another alternate as well. Yeah, and we, and we can, um, you know, get through a meeting or two with just one director. Um, that's okay. Nothing that's that's really the other that. option. Yeah. Yeah, I think I was the lone member on both of these committees at one point because uh, Dr. Daniels couldn't, um, I can't remember what the situation was. He wasn't there. He couldn't come. Okay. Um, and it worked fine because we had staff members and and then more than just a couple of people at these okay. uh, participating from the public. And I'll, if I can attend, I will. Okay. Um, I don't even, I'm not sure I'd even want to change the time at this point until next year. Right. I wouldn't recommend doing that because yeah. often it, 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 it yeah, I think partially revolves around some of the public members too. I think we should try to, because we've had a hard time getting, actually meeting, and I think we should just carry on as best we can. And Tom, you mentioned that you were willing to, um, was it the Water Resources Management and Infrastructure Committee? Yeah, I mean, if, 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 that's, if, if that's something somebody would like to be part of, and I'm, I, I'm fine if someone wants to do that, and then I, I could probably do the Public Outreach Committee if that's helpful. But we can wait till December too. I don't, you know, it, that's fine. I think he's making that offer for you since you're part of that already. As a, you were part of that as a public member, right? The water infrastructure, water resources management and infrastructure committee. So basically, I would still attend all the WRMI meetings, but now I'd have a new role. Yes. Yeah, I'm willing to do that. Sure, it'd be fun. Well, I think it would be better if you went participated as a board member. Yeah. One of the two. Rather than exactly. Position. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 No, then just attend. And Tom, you said yeah. you're willing to take I get it. the vacant seat for the next for few months. Public outreach, yeah. A public outreach. That'd be good. So we could make a motion or do Yeah, we it sounds, I think we could make a motion on that. I'll make that motion. Okay. That Director Balboni replace Director Lehu in the Water Resources mm -hmm. Management and Infrastructure Committee and that Director LeHu take the vacant seat in the Public Outreach Committee. I'm with me. Is that a second? I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> um, and I then think about these other uh, other issues that that come up at the end of the meeting at the end of the year, so that we could, you know, you'll be prepared. Okay. All right. Can we have a vote? Direct. Oh, we didn't have. Do, do we want to? I and the public comment. No, oh, there was. Yeah, there was initially. And and let me be clear because there's there's still the finance and administrative services that's open due to Dr. Daniels. So we're going to address that. Come back at another time. Right. Or, yeah. Well, there's only one meeting of that. Okay. I just want to make sure. I think and we I, shall. And I can make the meeting as that. the alternate. What was that, Tom? I was wondering if Rochelle was offering to just be the regular uh, the second member on, on the Finance and Administrative Services Committee. Yeah, I can do it either way because I'm the alternate. I would be there the next person anyway, and then we could look at it in December if we want to make it permanent. The meeting's October 23rd, and I'm pretty sure that you're going to the CSDA? No. I'm, oh, no? Okay. I'm not. Okay. Okay, so leave it as the motion as is then for now. It does the job. Okay. Okay. Director Balboni? Yes. Vice President Jaffe? Yes. Director Lehu? Yes. Director Lather? Yes. And President Christensen? Yes. Okay. Um, 
Okay, on to uh, that. That is approved. I, I think that's a that's a really good uh, yep. st a stop gap until just think about it for the, for the end of the year. Okay, I have seven point three. Just to be clear, so in December, will the external committees will? Yeah, we'll do the external committee, and we might need to touch on the finance, or did I miss something? So we'll bring that back. We do yeah. need to do. We need an alternate for finance, and and Rochelle to be the second one, or okay. however you want to do it. Okay. Yeah, we'll bring it back. Well, I think we can bring all of it back in December. Okay. We'll, yeah, I think we'll bring it all back, and if you yes. want to change it up again, we'll... That's what the whole Come idea back. was. Come back with the whole thing. Okay, great. Yes. Makes sense. Because it's nice to see the whole pie, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, item 7.3, um, approve the board attendance for uh, the Santa Cruz Area Chamber of Commerce Community Leadership Visit, which uh, is October 11th and 12th. Two-day... Two -day, um, Obligation. Yeah, I'll, I'll touch on this, and, and President Christensen, I know you've attended some, so you might want to. Yeah, and it was very worthwhile. I can comment on it. So, so what we have here is um, this is an annual event uh, by the Santa Cruz Area Chamber, which covers all of Santa Cruz. You know, there's Aptos Chamber, there's SoCal Capitola. This is the, the larger of them. And every year they do uh, usually get on a bus, and that's what will happen this time, and, and go visit you. So usually a sister sister areas like Napa, we've done uh, Santa Barbara, to try to learn from them. Uh, it, there's always a water resources stop. This year, it will be actually Pure Water Soquel is their stop. Mm -hmm. It's This one is um, to be more local, just to learn from the local folks. There is a one-night stay at the, um, uh, the Dream End, I believe, uh, because they do like to get people together. I mean, I would say... Half of this is about learning from other agencies, and then the other half is, is, is forming relationships with people throughout the community. It's been very valuable. Uh, what we did this year, I think in order to get, well, we, we reserved one spot, and we reserved it under my name, but it's open to anybody if the board would like to take that. If the board would like to, or two, up to two board members, right, Emma? Help me out with this. We have a space. And then, um, and... Yeah, I, Melanie, I don't think is available to attend, uh, and other managers weren't in, that interested. But I could attend with you or without you, or even the the ultimate might be is to meet you uh, at the bus, getting on, and just introduce you to some folks because you know I, I know that that group fairly well. If in case you might not know some of the people, but the options out there for the board to consider whatever you like. If none of the board members want to go, I'll take up that role. You know what the itinerary is? Uh, it, it's help. We're, I haven't seen a full agenda yet. Yeah, they. Let me. Let me. We've got a, a a link here. I know it's local, and the. Let me look and see. They they pull it together. So it'll be Santa Cruz, Watsonville, Mid County. And then day two is San Lorenzo Valley, Scotts Valley, City of Santa Cruz. I'm not exactly sure where they're stopping. We wanted to get it in why the discount rate was still applicable. Um, but in the past, it's things like hearing about, you know, the housing challenges or homeless. Some of it's related. Some of it's not. Uh, like I said, there's always been a water stop um, uh, on each of these. They try to co cross a couple uh, genres, if you will. Um, I don't know what the details are of this trip. I think he's still trying to piece it together. You have a date for the for the tour of the Pure Water SoCal, Melanie? Yeah, tentatively, we're on the first day, which is October 11th. Yeah, so there's a lot of jostling to go on. If I find, find out more, I could present that, but... Um, but you're yeah. just asking for a motion to authorize board member if they are able to. Yeah. And I'm, I'm behind that. I see the value of, okay. of being on a tour with with other leaders in our community and interacting. Yeah. That's the... So I'll, I'll make the motion. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, we need public uh, comment. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? I'll be 
out of the country. So. In case she's out. Okay. <laughs> But it, you can you can work out the details. Yeah. On, yeah. I mean, let us know. Um, I think there's a date in there to let us know by September 27th, if you would, um, if you want to uh, attend. Okay. And that be. And if you can let us know earlier, that's great. Um, and then we can talk about whether you you know whether I should attend to. All right. So I made the motion. I second it. Director Balboni? Yes. Vice President Jaffe? Yes. Director LeHue? Yes. Director Lather? Yes. And President Christensen? Yes. And and I would not be able to go just in case anybody was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Thank you. Why is it anyway? <laughs> and I'm not able to go either. Okay, so yeah. now we're down. Down to two. Number two. <laughs> Three, right? Oh. All right. No, it was it was really I met heard some really excellent talks on housing and and some really good uh, water projects. But it was it was more than a couple days. It was a couple days. Not mm -hmm. it was still. I think choose the projects well. To um, there's even a homeless, uh, you know, a, a homeless. You know, a lot of it's about housing. It was really impressive. Okay, item 7.4. Uh, this is an item called up, called for by Dr. Jaffe, and it is a presentation of some data from 2013. It almost seems like a different era, but uh, <laughs> the evaluate the analysis was uh, was an interesting way of presenting it. Bruce, I think you should take this over. Yeah, and, and I might say a few words before you. Oh no, I would. Okay, yeah, so one of the things I, I maybe consider for tonight and, and just to throw in the mix of what, what you're thinking is in October, the first or second meeting, we will be having the rate consultant come and mm -hmm. present some information. So we'll, whatever is requested of us by the board, we'll have to decide whether staff can do it in-house or whether we need the rate consultant. But it may be... Unless you have specifics, the what the first meeting that the rate consultant does may help inform what you're looking for too. That's what I'm, I'm trying to put out there. So there's a couple of options. Thank you. Okay. So I don't know if this is the graphs are cryptic to the other board members. A little. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I, I had to go down to the graphics instead of the tables because yeah, I, I, I think I remembered that better. But, but it, what I get out of it is from the, from the graphics is um, how many of our customers are using water at, at different levels. And that's critical to my thinking about how to set rates. And um, I don't know, looks like you've got one up there. So when you're single family by monthly use, and this is in the x-axis is hundreds of cubic feet. So that's roughly 750 gallons. And the y-axis is cumulative use. So at zero, at, at zero water use, it's zero percent or close to it. And then at the highest water use, which is above 50 HCF, it's at 100 percent. And so it's a cumulative use. So um, on, on this graph, there's you can go to any um, level on the the y-axis, and here it's um, I think it's 34 percent, and you can see where if you draw a line and where it intersects that curve um, shows what the water use is. 
So within target here, I think the target was 11 HCF. And so 34% of the people use 11 HCF or less. And it's also done by percent of bills. So that next, the next one, it's the same way since it's cumulative use. Again, it starts zero and goes up to 100. So 100% 100 of the people, if you go to the upper right corner, 100% uh, of all bills um, use a cumulative use that's 100%, 0%, 0%. But if you look at one, again, one of the horizontal lines, here it's 34% um, of the of the water. Again, it's and so in percent of bills is up at at 61% where it hits the x-axis. So with that that shows and it's labeled lowest 61% of bills use 34% of the water. So there's a um, Based on this curve, you can see how many people, how many bills are um, at what what level. So there's a line also at 50 percent, and this is this is winter, and it it shows that. Um, 50 50 percent. Well, in this case, it's so the top 25% of the bills use 50% or more of the water. So I, the reason I wanted to, to look at these is because, like Carla said, different era. There are a lot of different things that have happened. And... I would like to see how this has changed with time. And I think it'd be particularly interesting also to see what effect, you know, our last rate structure had, although there's many different factors. But if we looked at what the way, you know, what the use is in a rep now and looked at what the use was before we enacted a different rate structure, we might see some some uh, relations that we could could help set the new rates. So, yeah, no, it was, I thought it was an interesting graphic actually too, but I wasn't sure how much work it was to put together. Not a lot of work. It was done for free by Sue Holt. And basically all it is is taking the, the tables that are in here and graphing them. So I forget, Ron. Can I add one thing that I, I think the information that you're getting from this is valuable. There might be a graphical way to present it that would be easier for me to get. Like, I mean, I do want to know what, percent of the water, you know, like, I like knowing what percentage of our customers are using, you know, are, are under the, a, a given threshold or at different levels of water use. Um, I'm not sure this is the easiest way to graph it. Um, or maybe I'm missing something, but I mean, I got it, but it's, yeah, to me, I'm not if sure. If you're not used to looking at these. Yeah. So maybe if we do end up doing something like this, there could be, you know, a, this and specific, you know, other graphs showing, you know, instead of having it all in one graph with all the, the data, have that for those who want to see the, the complete data, but have um, just specific questions like, you know, what, how many customers, you know, use above a certain amount or right. half the customers use this amount or less. You could 
So there could be, you know, bullet points extracted or, or graphical, um, a graph that, uh, you know, makes the points without getting into the details that you can pull off of these types of graphs. But so what you're suggesting, Ron, is that. Yeah, I mean, first of all, let, let, this is, it's, we can, I can find out the effort. Uh, I will note that these are, we, we were bi-monthly when we did this, and the, and the rate structures changed twice. So they're, they're, we'd have to cut things or multiply them or whatever. That's not a big deal. But um, what I'm suggesting is might serve you the best. And look, is when we come back, we're going to come back basically with the revenue needs and the financial plan at the next, um, either October, the first October meeting or the second, I can't remember which. And when you hear Raf tell us present then, it won't be uh, rate structure. It'll just be revenue needs. Here's what we're 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 looking at um, needing to expend, and this is the hence our revenue uh, needs. And then how is that roughly translate into percentage of revenue needs? Not rate structure because it's they they can change depending on how you do the rate structure. But at that time, I, it, you could maybe have a good interaction. There's one way to go about it with the consultant, because this is what they do, saying, this is what we're looking for. He's aware of this memo, I believe. I've sent it to him. But um, this is what we're trying to understand, and then they can talk about how, how they might approach that and the level of effort. That's just one way. Yeah, no, that sounds like a reasonable way to proceed. Yeah. Um, I did find another thing from Sue that was not as, you know, not a memo, but actually uh, Alex. Uh, Alex Handler? Right? Yeah, had contributed to it as well. It was just, you know, not, a, not as, um, as clean. But I do believe Alex provided the data to Sue on the... Yeah, either either our office did or Sue. It, it was it, it took a little time. I mean, it wasn't just a back of the envelope calculation. She she did a, a you know a good job and put some time into this. So um, that's why I'm suggesting maybe let let um, Raf tell us come and Kevin present and then there's gonna we're we're hoping to present once in October, November, and December. So at that early October meeting gives you time. Okay. The second meeting is where I think you're going to be most interested. That sounds like a good plan. Sounds like a good plan. Okay. And, and thank you for passing on to him the, this memo. And, yeah. and I'd say the, the, the big question I have is how is our water use changing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or is it changing? Right. And then um, what I'm leery of are numbers like means. Because okay. the mean doesn't doesn't tell the story. I agree with that. Yeah. Because we want to know sometimes also what, how many customers are affected by exactly. a particular decision we make with rates. Um, to me, that's a really big one. You know, and, so, and the one of the graphs we looked at how tonight. Much and and, and um, how many customers would have their bills go up, go down, all that. Right. And that that's you can get that directly from that that graph that shows the percentage of bills at different levels. Okay. We got it. Three big items, and I'll pass this on, and we can. Um, uh, I'll tell them be prepared for this that, for discussion, and then you can also uh, ask other questions or provide other direction. Great. And, you know, it may be out of the scope. I'm not sure. You know, it depends on what we ask, and then there may be some associated costs. But maybe you can ballpark it at that point. To make sure. I'm sure there'll be costs. Yeah. But I'm sure they want. They need to spend some time presenting rationale for certain rates, and they know we're going to want to know about when they do these bids. They know that we're going to want to know about how it's going to affect our customers in various right. ways. Right. Right. I'm sure any tier structure, if there is a tier structure, that, that would be presented. This is how many would fall in X tier, Y tier, Z tier, or whatever. Yeah. So, but I think you're looking at it from a little more global point to try to inform that decision. Um, exactly. Yeah. 
Now, there may be more limitations on that since 218 has yeah. progressed a little bit, but he can inform us. I'm well aware of that. Yeah. There has to be a nexus yeah. between costs and, and, and what, what is charged for the water. But it would be interesting. It would be something that we would want to know is how, how, these, how many people would be affected by it. You know, and I cannot hear you, Colin. Moving into another, another rate, tier. Yeah, another rate structure or yeah. another okay. different tiers. Yeah, there'll be multiple times. We'll be back in October. I'll tell them this is your interest. Then we can ask those yeah. questions again. Does that sound appropriate? Yeah, and, yeah. and thank you for, for bringing. Oh yeah, that. yeah. They threw me back. You know, I because I was author of the other memo, <laughs> going back ten years. And yes, you were. Yeah, yeah. 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 Remember and Sue, Doctor. Yeah. So, any comments from the public, please? Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. It threw me back in time, too, to see your name, Mr. Duncan, there with that uh, conservation. I went with my wonderful neighbor who has now passed away, Michael Mills, to a presentation of what I think was some of this information at the New Brighton Middle School. And that was uh, something when <laughs> your district was presenting water budget present, uh, ideas. It didn't go over well. And I also remember them meeting about a moratorium at the Seascape, uh, Seascape Bill, um, Lodge, too. <laughs> I couldn't even get in. So um, I have some questions about this. I, I think it's interesting information, too, although I know because we've all seen the water use numbers and information that since 2014, when there was a drought, the usage never went back up, and uh, that's wonderful. <laughs> um, so we know that it's much different now. Um, there are much better water conservation um, facilities, uh, appliances, and things, and people's use has just changed for the better. I have a question. Um, how they came up with on... Um, Page 29, 24,641 bills sent out. I think I've seen a number much lower than that for your district. So has that changed? Um, I also want to point out that um, the I, I did see I was forwarded your quick sips and talking about the rate advisory committee, but there's no information about that on your website. So I would like to see that um, put up. Um, there is, is, is uh, Dr. Sue Holt still with us? I mean, she did a tremendous amount of work. Is she still with us? Would she be willing to do this again for the district, um, for the benefit of the people? I, I think it's worth asking. And, meld her information with Raf Tellis because she's got a good handle on things. Thank you. I guess that's my, my last question. Um, Thank you. You know, your Cabrillo is College up. is, is Brenner, coming up, is up with Thank a lot you. of units. Please be respectful and sit so down. We units. appreciate it. I'm the only one Thank here you. for heaven's sake. No, but it's sake. our time. Please, thank you. We appreciate you being respectful. Right. Just watch Cabrillo College's units. They're it's sizable. Um, I think I think this is in the bailiwick of you know, the rate the rate consultant. You know. you know they know what the structure is and what information we want. I think that they'll be able they could come up with a cost estimate. It's a I would get it done and maybe yeah I'll prep them for that. It's a standard. Maybe no big deal. We'll do, we'll find out. Yeah. So. And it's not not a big effort, really. Yes. We did, but that was the last item. Um, I does there is I don't think we need a motion for this, do we? No. No informational. So, uh, what does say? Motion to direct. direct staff. So, I don't think that's necessary. We're going to ask some questions, and you're going to ask questions and bring it back. To yeah, you. yeah. What I'll ask is, um, be prepared. Um, 
Well, item seven point seven point three here. Take my glasses off. Um, what what level of effort would it be to mimic some of what was done before, and uh, what the costs associated with that would be, and and if if there's another way to kind of derive to get at this, that might even be more insightful based on you wanting to know um, where certain customer where customers fall in certain categories and there's a summer winter aspect of it, as you mm -hmm. can see through Dr. Holt's work so I think I've got it um, but again if if we miss the mark in October really that comes into play in the second meeting uh, when they're they're going to present rate and structures and that sort of thing I'd also like to one of the things, one of the assumptions was clearly an average because there it said that we're two adult, two and a half person per household. That is definitely an average for a customer base. It is. Oh it is. It's done by so wait, There's either, there's a ton of one person apartment dwellers and homeowners that, and there's a large family. So it's, it, it really is a complicated. Well, that data actually in that other informal memo was presented based on census for all the tracts in, in our district. Mm. Oh. And I can send that to you, Ron, and you can send it out. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember back that far, but that'd be awesome. I just came across it today. Okay. Well, that would be good, because that is one of the big problems with trying to do water budgets and things like that. The hassle of getting strict counts on occupation. Who's occupying the household? Mm -hmm. so, anyway, any other anything else before we adjourn? Okay, this is it. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye. Yes, can't get rid of them that easily. <laughs>